Day one of TST is complete, and what a wild and crazy day it was in Cary, North Carolina. We had a lot of MASL representation, and several of our players did not disappoint. We're going to cover some of the big moments and share with you today's highlights. In addition, we did a quick interview after game one with Sneaky Fox goalkeeper Chris Toth, which we will be showing to you momentarily. Hello again, everybody. My name is Christian Philemon, otherwise known as Philly, and joining me, Amanda Philemon, lovingly known as Panda, and the doctor himself, Jonathan Reimer. Hello, everybody, and welcome again to this wonderful show where we get to unpack all of today's action. But, of course, before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to MASL Soccer on Facebook and Instagram and MASL Arena on Twitter. It is a pleasure to be here with you both. I had a lovely day on my couch, day off. I had one game on the big screen, one game on the computer, one game on my phone. I'm loving every minute of TST. Folks, make sure that you are watching along. You got the big games on ESPN+. Plus. You can find all the rest of the games at tstlive.thetournament.com. And of course, be sure to give the TST a follow on Twitter at TST7V7 so you don't miss the action. So much to talk about, so little time. So let's just get things started off. First, each of us had our picks on the preview show as to who we thought had the best chance in the TST tournament for a team featuring MASL talent. And Panda, why don't you kick things off? Let the listeners and the viewers know who you picked and how they fared out today. Yeah, I think this is about the time when you're supposed to queue up the little womp, 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 womp. There you go. Because unfortunately, my pick for kind of a you know newcomer, someone to watch out for, was Tranquilo FC. They had a lot of talent, a lot of MASL talent out there that I thought maybe could kind of come and shock these veteran guys. But unfortunately, quick goal FC kind of lived up to their name. <laughs> Unfortunately, they did smash Tranquilo FC 9-3. to three. We did have target goals by Ricardo Dieguez and a target brace by none other than Vinny Dantas. But unfortunately, those were not enough to overcome the quick goals, eight goal lead. So unfortunately, we are not going to have good news. And I think a lot of that um, we'll get into in just a second of why I think that they didn't do as well because the second game gave us a little hope. They did go up a two nothing after regulation goals by Skylar Funk and Juan Mendoza, but unfortunately they did fall three to two after they failed to execute that extra attacker. Now these were both very exciting games, and you know in the first game I forgot to mention the hat trick by Giovinco and uh, Mello with the target goal. We had Hugo de Silva with a great uh, goal for um, quick goals as well. So we had a lot of good action, but unfortunately did not go the way that I had hoped it was going to go. But not having Marco Fabian on a team like that is definitely going to impact how you feel that they are going to fare. And I had a lot riding on him, and we just haven't seen him. And we have heard that there could be some sightings uh, this weekend. Not exactly sure when. So hopefully he can come back, maybe resurrect this team into something that is still competitive and can make it to that knockout bracket. But right now, not looking so good for my pick, Tranquilo FC, unfortunately. No, Tranquilo got off to a rough start. Really, really thought they had that second game, but they are missing their Mexican superstar. My team, my pick, full of Mexican superstars top to bottom. That's because I picked La Bombonera, and they got off cracking. I think the best way to describe the first match is simply with this eloquent tweet put out by the folks at MASL. <laughs> Goals from Urban Mojica Monterey, Hugo Puentes Savage, and Eric Ponce Monterey with two, including the target score time goal, gives La Bombonera the 6-4 win over Checks Notes Inter Milan. That's right. MASL talent just took out Inter Milan in game one, and I'm loving it. Game two, La Bombonera rolled onward. They went to a 5-3 victory versus Banjeristas, and it was capped off by this beautiful goal from my boy, Popper. <laughs> All right, let's cue this up so you guys can see what we are talking about. And if you guys have any thoughts on it, let us know. Just a 
beautiful play across the top, creates the space for himself, fires it home, top right corner. What an absolute golazo, beautiful goal, perfect indoor movement, drawn people left and right, creating the space to go right down the middle. That was a theme, indoor talent, moving people around today, and I love to see it. Que golazo. Que golazo. Que golazo indeed. And just want to give a shout out, just going back to Panda's game with quick goal and Tranquilo FC. Uh, Dominic Harris had himself a brace in that game. Obviously, Sebastian Giovinco was the star in that one. But shout out to Harrisburg Heats. Dominic the Dominator uh, doing his thing. And obviously, Carlos Popet Hernandez as well uh, in the second game that the doctor was talking about. My team, Newtown Pride FC, the defending reigning undisputed TST champions had themselves a great day. First match up was against DC hyper Texas outlaw superstar Luis Morales started things off on the scoring sheets a little half, a little halfway over the first half. That would be the only goal we would see over the course of the first 20 minutes to start things off in the second half. It would take mere seconds as Gabriel Ganser forces a turnover that leads to a goal by Utica city's Nilton DeAndrade. He would score later on, by the way. Uh, and by he, I mean Gabriel Ganser. Uh, one good Gabriel, though, deserves another as Gabriel Costa scored the game winner in target score time. And that propels the defending champs. Very easy game against DC Hyper. No questions asked there. Game two would be a little different. It would be a lot closer against Supra United. Luis Morales would start the scoring much like he did in game one. The Texas outlaw becoming quite the gunslinger in Cary, North Carolina. We'd see no goals until TST time when Luis Morales would get the game-winning assist to Gabriel Ganser. Both players, by the way, having an outstanding time in the tournament. Newtown Pride is going to play tomorrow against Zala at 8.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And Gabriel Ganser, looking him up, the only thing I can find was the fact that he played in USL League 2 with the Western Mass Pioneers. He is making a name for himself. And at 31, he still has plenty of time ahead of him. Who knows? Perhaps we will see him in the MASL next season. All right, I guess that's me uh, moving on to our next one, huh? <laughs> was that yeah, my cue she there? Was up, by the way, by your husband. Thank you very much. Was uh, that my cue up? Brother, as some people might have thought. All right, I will move on in to another one of my picks was actually Konka Kefa FC. I was really excited about this team for a lot of reasons, mainly because of the firepower of Zach Reggett and Drew Ruggles and, of course, Stefan Miatovic. And this is also Pat McAfee's team. So you got all eyes on his team, wanting to see how they were going to do. And it's been so hyped with uh, with his name on a lot of things. So you really had a lot of expectations. But uh, Reggae Rovers came out with a vengeance, man. And they were able to take game one from CONCACAFA, CONCACAFA FC. CONCACAFA. <laughs> CONCACAFA? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I mean, I think the entire origin of the word is a mispronunciation anyway. So if you mispronounce it, that's really paying homage to the origins of it. And I, I feel <laughs> like you've stayed there for that. There. Oh, we'll, just, we'll just call it Con FC. But either way, <laughs> <laughs> Four to one, they were able to beat them in that first game by way of a scores three three goals right or oh go, sorry goal three. I'm sorry when I'm reading the notes sometimes uh, my brain is moving faster than my mouth. But Roshan Panthon from Harrisburg Heat he actually scored goal number three. So another MASL player uh, to keep your eye on now. Despite the loss, we, there was still a massive game by Stefan Miatovic. He had some wicked shots, uh, a lot of saves, and uh, he actually turned the favor on them. He stepped into the goal as the goalkeeper, keeper, and he was able to make a couple huge saves, and he also scores a goalkeeper goal. We're going to show you those in just a moment. Um, but yeah, both teams definitely built momentum into their demonstrative second games. Reggae Rovers dispatch Burnley. Yes, that Burnley, who we're talking about, seven to one. So Reggae Rovers, keep your eye on this team because they are just picking off opponents left and right. Uh, there was a goal by Gordy Gerson and a dime. Oh my gosh. You have to have seen this. If you follow anything TST wise on Twitter or Instagram, you had to have seen this mwah, chef's kiss of a cross path pass to was it who was it that actually scored the goal <laughs> i don't even Mike know Grella. I think 
Mike Gorella, yeah. From, Mike, from CBS Mike Sports Gorilla. Golasso Network. That's right. Okay, so there we go. Mike Grella of CBS Sports Golasso Network. He had a heck of a scissor kick off of that dime from Pat McAfee. So, I mean, got to go back and see it. We didn't queue up the highlights because, well, they're not MASL talent, so you can do that yourself. But either way, we still see Mia Tovich play sixth attacker again, scores the target goal to win the game off of a dime from none other than Zach Reggett. And I told you, if these guys could find some cohesion and some teamwork, their firepower was going to be something to watch out for. And boy, was it. Uh, I know, Jonathan, you were able to watch that game. And uh, uh, yeah, that was quite a boot on Steph, would you not say? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he had about three, four chances to put this game away, let's be honest. But this moment, we're about to see where he finally does it. Just a classic Miatovich move, and I love it. Here you go. Let's take a look at exactly what I knew was going to happen if he were able to get that ball at his feet. He's just got such a strong strike. I mean, we see it all the time in the MASL in the game. He's no stranger to game-winning goals and just being able to score them from all sides of the pitch, in front of the goal, outside of the goal, anywhere you look. And I mean, I just love the celebration by him and Reggett. You know, like they are just having the time of your lives, you can tell. <laughs> Anyways, a lot of fun games and uh, yeah, curious to see if they can hang on and advance. So uh, Sneaky Fox though, Philly, why don't you talk yeah. a little bit about them? Cause uh, they had quite the day. Did they not? <laughs> yeah. Sneaky Fox had an interesting day. Uh, they, they won one and they lost one. The first one, they had a comeback win over Pasha luxury uh, FC in game one. You had goals by the Tacoma stars triumvirate and that of Nick Pereira, who by the way, happy birthday, Nick, and welcome to the third floor, a uh, Jamel juice Cox. And then Chris Toth scores to win it. Three to two after going in the target score, down two to zero. Toth with another amazing target goal from deep to win it. The ice man, as the doctor loves to call him, with ice in his veins, does it for the second year in a row where he hits a game winner. The guy can score goals. We've seen him do it in indoor. We've seen him do it at beach uh, as a member of the United States Beach Men's National Team. And obviously, we've seen him do it at TST. Sneaky Fox, though, would unfortunately run into Sebastian Giovenko's led quick goal in game two and fall by a margin of four to one. But let's go back real quick and take a look at that amazing goal lasso by Chris Toth Panda. As George Michael would say on the uh, sports machine, let's go to the videotape. I mean, Chris Toth it just doesn't matter, right? It could be turf. It could be sand. It could be grass. This guy just has ice in his veins. He's got such an elegant shot, such a great long ball. He loves to take those shots from way outside the box because you know why? No one is expecting it, at least not these guys who aren't as used to him. Anybody in the MASL knows he's going to take that shot and make it 10 out of 10 times. I, I mean, no the one, one thing I really love about this goal is the nonverbal communication he has with his other teammates. If you watch in the buildup, he sends one defender that's on his left off to create a little space for him to step into. He signals the overlap to come in behind that confuses the keeper, draws the defense off. And he's teasing that he's coming to that near post to open up the far post. And just when the player comes across for that far post shot, he tucks it in near post. I mean, it's it's such a brilliance. It's such a team goal in the nonverbal communication. I mean, everything about it, world class. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're going to take a moment to go to an interview that I did with him quickly. And keep in mind that this was after game one when Sneaky Fox won. It was before the game against Quick Goal. Panda, let's roll the uh, quick little interview that we did with Sneaky Fox goalkeeper and Golasso scoring machine, Chris Toth. It is my honor and privilege to welcome Tacoma Stars and Sneaky Fox goalkeeper, Chris Toth, to the MASL TST show. Chris, thank you for the take and the time to chat with us today. You know, solid start for you and Sneaky Fox. You buried the game winner. Talk to us about today's game versus Pasha Luxury. Yeah, it, uh, it was a bit ugly for us. You know, we went down 1-0 in the first half, and we were just trying to kind of figure it out. We have a mix of uh, indoor guys and a mix of some outdoor guys that aren't really uh, used to the small-sided game. So it took us a bit to kind of, you know, get it going a bit. Um, but... You know, we were down 2-0, and uh, in target time, that's where anything kind of happens and makes the game unique. 
You scored the game winner. That that was incredible. Now, you guys are in a group with teams with a lot of MASL talent. You got Quick Goal, Donkey 10 FC, Pasha Luxury, who you dispatched of earlier. Like, who do you view as the toughest opponent in this group? I think Quick Goal is going to be very difficult. Um, I They just beat Tranquilo. Uh, I think it was 9-3, to three, um, which I did not see that coming. I thought it was going to be a much tighter game. Um, but I think, you know, I was surprised by Pasha. I didn't really know anything of them. Um, but I, I do know that they play seven aside, uh, kind of yearly. Um, I don't know how much, but you know, that's, that says something. So they were very organized. Um, but I think the, the match against quick goal will probably be the biggest one. And then also tomorrow against Tranquilo, that's a full indoor team. They understand the small side of game. Um, but yeah, I, I think our group is very difficult. Um, when you look around, uh, you know, and you look at the other groups, it's just, it's a tough one. Um, but that's all right. You know, we're, we're ready to, to kind of start the, the tournament off, you know, against good competition. Um, and that's what this year is. You know, last year was, uh, I think it was 32 teams this year is 48 and the competition's just, it's a lot better. Yeah, that, and that actually transitions me into my next question. I mean, this is your second season playing with Sneaky Fox in the TST. What, if, what else have you noticed in terms of differences between how things are this year as compared to last year, not only in terms of just the competition on the field, but the event overall? Yeah, I mean, it was really organized last year. Um, the fields are immaculate. Um, everything going into this year is the same, if not even better. Um, it just, yeah, it, uh, there's a lot of good things to say about the tournament. I mean, it's it's top notch. Um, but yeah, I would say the biggest thing is like we were talking about before, it's 48 teams, more teams from around the world are in Inter Milan here, you know, like you've got a lot of big names, uh, you know, that are playing and uh, it's getting a lot more attraction throughout the world, which is great. Of course. And have you gotten to to meet anybody that you wanted to meet uh, over the course of the uh, the day or you just more focused on uh, everybody on the pitch's opposition? Uh, not really. Uh, I got to meet Sasha Question, who's on our team. So that was really cool. Um, but no, I mean, I, I might find some people that I, I might want to meet, especially from the Inter team, because I'm an Inter fan and it'd be cool to kind of catch them through passing. Um, but uh, no, we're just kind of just focused on on us and playing and if you know i see anybody that's just kind of be a little bonus of course now you've gotten to play this beautiful sport in many different ways and varieties outdoor obviously beach is a member of the u.s national uh, beach team indoor with the empire strikers san diego soccer's now tacoma stars like how does the tst compare to all the other versions of the sport that you've competed in it's very similar to indoor um, a little bit of beach too. Beach is one, uh, you know, five on five, you know, indoors, six on six, the seven on seven. So indoor translates the best. Um, you know, th- it, it's a numbers game, you know, and it, it, when you're using the goalkeeper, like, you know, a lot of teams are now in this tournament, uh, it's just kind of eliminating pieces and putting people into good positions to kind of overload space. Um, and and kind of move the defenders around in in ways that you can either go one v one or or find a pass or even a shot. Um, and that's kind of how these small sided games work is just numerical advantage. Of course. Now you're playing back with Nick with Juice. Like, what does it mean to you to be playing with some of your closest friends? Uh, you know, it's. I think you can ask that question to a lot of players, not just in the indoor league but you know around the world and i don't think they get the luxury of being able to play with not only good players but also they're really really good friends and when you when you get to do that you know it it only makes things more difficult for everybody else you know um so it's a special thing and you have to embrace it when you have it you know of course now i mean i know you've got uh you got things to do. You need to relax. You need to prepare. And I know you got Nick sleeping on the, on the other end, trying to get some shut eye as well. My final question is, is there anything we should look out for uh, or anything that you want to leave our audience with before we let you go? No, just go sneaky Fox, man. Keep your eye out. We're sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> Sneak, sneaky you are. You certainly snuck that goal past the keeper. Uh, did you know that was going in after it left your foot? 
it felt good off the foot. It felt really nice. And I looked up and it was, it was already in, but yeah, it, it, it felt, you know, when you hit a ball and you know, you, you connect, right. You know, you just, you kind of have a feeling. It, it seemed inevitable. The minute like, I just saw the look on your face, the body reaction, I just, it, you obviously knew that something was going down. It was a gorgeous goal. Congrats to you and Sneaky Fox, Chris. And we'll be supporting you from afar as we always have. Good luck the rest of the tournament and cheers, my friend. Awesome. Thanks, Billy. Thanks for having me on. Of course. Great stuff there from Chris Toth. Brilliant. Let's go ahead and dive into a couple of the other MASL-laden teams and their performance today before we touch on the leaderboards for you real quick. So I want to talk about Nani FC real quick. We saw Ricardo Carvalho get goals in each game for them. That saw them to go undefeated on the day they took down La Mexican Express and Say Word FC. We have yet on that team to see any contributions, however, from Frank Tayu, Lucas Roque, or Drew Ruggles as of yet. <laughs> All right, and then I'll quickly talk about Saturday's football. They did defeat uh, Des Impedidos FC 3-1 to one in Game 1. We did see Hugo Gomez in goal, who we know is uh, part of the Empire Strikers, and he was able to get that win. Unfortunately, they would drop their second game to Wrexham 1-0. to zero. Dang you, Brian Reynolds. Well, moving on, North Carolina FC. Brian Farber had a brace in game one over the combined Texas team's Villarreal squad to win that game four to three. And Craig Childs found a goal in the second game. William Vanzella, 11 saves in game two, and they beat City Soccer Society. So North Carolina FC, 2-0 as well. Barber looked really good on that header and that header with that fresh new haircut. I mean, it's, I think he does it on purpose. It just, it looks so apropos. You see the hair. It just, it went and smashed the goal. He, he, maybe he could come out of retirement. I know he retired, but there's obviously still some juice left in the tank for Brian Farber, getting himself a brace, captain Craig Childs, William Van Zella. And since we're talking about stats, doc Panda, why don't we go transition and see who the MASL stat leaders are after day one, Doc, why don't you kick us off with goals and assists? Your MASL golden boot race is tight at the moment. We've got a massive tie. Roberto Cavallo, Vinny Dantas, Dom Francis, Craig Childs, Stefan Mia, Jadovic, Luis Morales, <laughs> and Eric Ponce all tied at two goals after game day one. Yeah, the leader overall, Sebastian Giovenko, had a hat trick game one, had a brace game two. Have to highlight that because it is overall, he's clearly not MASL talent, but a great player nonetheless. I got Gabriel Ganser. I want to throw him in there as well. I don't know where this kid came from. I had never heard of him before. He, a couple of assists, a couple of goals. Keep an eye out on him. And speaking of assists, the Texas outlaw himself, Luis Morales, not only is he bagging goals, he's dishing dimes too. He's uh, up there with two. And then we have three other players uh, that are tied in there as well. But keep an eye on Luis Morales having plenty of goal scoring contributions from the Texas Outlaws by way now of Newtown Pride FC. And it's no surprise we see him as your MASL points leader as well, too. Just uh, to recap for you folks, you get two points for a goal in TST and one point for an assist. His two goals and two assists find him at six points, leading the MASL leaderboard, trailing leader. Giovinco with 10 points in two games. Yeah, saves. You got Christian Hernandez uh, with 14 saves. Uh, the leader in the MASL currently at 18, but Christian Hernandez putting in a phenomenal performance as he did time and time again over the course of the MASL regular season. And uh, he's up there with save percentage as well, doctor. Uh, tied, uh, I mean, he's not, he's, the side that he's on has been competing very well. There's three people that are tied with 100% on the save percentage. And, yeah, that's uh, that's going to round out the stats leaders here in MASL during the TST tournament. Uh, you can't do much better than allowing zero goals in both games. Three teams to have done that. Uh, not only Hernandez, but the likes of Toronto Athletic and Rally Rebels as well, too, going unscored on in both games. All right, folks, let's go ahead and dive into tomorrow's matches real quick here at the end of the show and get you ready for what's happening from an MASL perspective from the morning on through to the evening's games. So kicking us off at 1130 in the morning, we've got Zala taking on new town pride the reigning champs looked good day one but can they seal that victory to take the group on day two 
We're going to find out at 1 o'clock p.m. City Soccer Society at Villarreal CF. The Texas Sidekicks or the Dallas Outlaws or whatever you call them. <laughs> Villarreal have work to do after dropping game one, day one. 2.30 p.m. Dueling for Lincoln FC at Borussia Dortmund. Billy Stymack and Christian Briggs of the St. Louis Ambush have another German giant to slay on day two. And I mentioned that because uh, they dispatched Bayern on day one. They now face Borussia Dortmund on day two. In a carbon copy, the town FC are taking on FC Bayern Munich after they dispatched Dortmund on day one and get to go for their German double tomorrow. And then at 4 o'clock p.m., La Bombonera at Gracie FC. The Chocolate Box Boys made their mark on day one, and they now have to wrestle with the Gracie family. You see what we did there on day two. Now a potent offensive side featuring early Golden Boot candidate Alan D. Estes. Couple games kicking off at 5 p.m. Des Empeditos at Wrexham. UCFC's Kelvin Oliveira versus Ryan Reynolds is Wrexham. Lights, camera, action. Uh, also at 5 p.m., the Roja Eagles are taking on Saturday's football after dispatching Desempedidos and wrestling with Wrexham. Saturday's football will take on Swiss side Roja legends. All right, and then following that at 6 o'clock p.m., Summer of Soccer at Hashtag United. Sounds like a social media thing just boiling up right there. Four Baltimore players will try to blast their way past the Comets keeper, Philip Ejimadu. Nani FC at 6 p.m. at Aguero's team. Nani with a chance to send Sergio Aguero's side a packing. Oh, rounding out the evening's game, folks, at 7.15, Reggae Rovers are taking on Natty SC. Also at 7.15, those guys from Burnley, the men's team, that is, they're going to be facing off against Concafa SC. Ooh. Ooh, and then at 8.45 p.m., we're going to see Pasha Luxury FC at Quick Goal FC. Quick Goal had a statement win over Tranquilo on day one. They line up against UCFC's Brian Wilkin and Pasha Luxury in day two. And to cap it all off, 8.45 p.m. Tranquilo FC or Tranqui 10. Tranquilo FC, though. At Sneaky Fox, this is some much-watched. This is a must-watch <laughs> soccer game, I got to tell you. All the MASL talent one could ask for on display. Tacoma versus Tacoma. Herrera, Tal Toth, John uh, versus Nani and, and, and Ramos, Picante Amigos. Then you got Pino versus Cardenas, Soccers on Soccers. Tranquilo, desperately need a win, and Sneaky Fox aren't that far behind them. Well, folks, Woo. that about wraps us up for day one, gets us all ready for day two. We are running low on time here, but at the very end, I'm just going to ask you both, what was your favorite thing about day one? Philly. Uh, my favorite thing about day one, uh, just, just the fact that at any hour of the day, we could turn on the TV or your internet for that matter and see football, whether it had been in the morning, having your cup of coffee or in the evening, having dinner, there were games all day long. And I love that. It feels like March madness only in June soccer, June madness. That's what I love. Panda. I don't know. I kind of thoroughly enjoyed seeing JJ Watt almost take out the keeper on a header, forgetting that he was playing soccer and not in a pad and helmets playing football. He looks like a rugby player out there, guys. It's the funniest thing, but love seeing him out there having the time of his life. Hands and down, you. My favorite thing on the day is just what a name the MASL is making for itself and how perplexed broadcasters and outdoor players alike are at the skill sets they have to deal with. Goalkeepers that can go down quickly and get back up and distribute a ball, something you don't see in the outdoor game. The ability to move defenders around, react to an ever-shrinking squad, and you see it when it goes 5v5, 4v4, how the MASL players really shine in those tight moments, and just the ability for keepers to come forward and perplex everybody as to what they are doing as an extra attacker has just been so much fun for me to watch. The beauty of the MASL game infect outdoor people with its energy it's been a great day it's been a great day and i can't wait to see this again with you guys tomorrow yeah absolutely and that's going to conclude game day one we're going to be back here tomorrow for game day two recap with a couple more interviews 
We'd love to tell you who they are, but we'd prefer to surprise you. A couple of them, perhaps. Uh, we'll look to have a player interview on every single one of these game recaps. Again, make sure you follow the TST tournament. Games are on ESPN+, Plus, or you can catch them all on the TST website. We hope you enjoyed today's show, and we'll be back again tomorrow night. See you on the flip side. Peace.